Hello, and welcome. We're doing something a little different. I've loaded up Rugby Challenge, which I have modded in uh, the 2012 rosters, 2012, 2013 rosters, as well as accurate jerseys and stuff. And we are going to do the Pacific Nations Cup, which is just around the corner here in a few months as a lead into the World Cup. So what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to play through all the games to see who wins, and I'm going to start with the first game, Fiji versus Tonga, and I'm going to play whatever side is home. Those, that's the team I'm going to control. So as you can see in the breakdown, I've got the day one of the tournament lined up, Fiji versus Tonga, Canada versus Japan, United States versus Samoa, and we're going to go through all of those as day one not day one, but round one, switch over to round two before we go on to the finals. And this will be a really nice lead-in, especially for the countries involved to kind of get hype for the World Cup and see where each side is going and what they need to work on and what they need to improve, especially the United States, who gets most of their pool previewed in this tournament. So without further ado, we're going to take Fiji against Tonga, and it is currently, I have the matches set to 15 minutes on hard, and we're going to go. Here we are, Fiji Tonga. I've turned the commentators off so we don't have to listen to them. Um, <laughs> they're annoying. So, I'll do commentaries, and I apologize in advance for most of these names that I'm not going to be able to say. Um, I'll try with a few of them, but no promises. So, while we're here, we can talk about the teams going in. Tonga and Fiji, where they sit in the World Cup, as well as the Pacific Nations about to kick off. I mean, obviously most mines are on the Pacific Nations right now, and that is not a good way to start for Fiji. <laughs> A knock on straight off the interception or off the uh, kickoff but how especially Fiji I think Fiji has an interesting match or an interesting pool really in the World Cup with chance to upset a few big teams if oh, it's gonna be a knock on kind of day I think and we're going to tempt fate and do cutouts to allow off to the outside is brought down but we can get support runners there around played off again Ooh, knocked on so I guess we get to come back to the scrum which is okay ooh good hit good hit good hit good hit so Following, oh, that was a good pass. Uh, but following this uh, little kind of recording of the uh, Pacific Nations, if it goes well, if I like it, I'll do a World Cup one, and you guys can write. That looked off sides to me, but you guys can write uh, in the comments what teams you want me to do, what teams you want me to play. I mean, obviously the big, big, the big ones that I guess a lot of people will say. Oh, forward. Um, South Africa, Argentina, Wales, Ireland, the Pacific Islands, but um, other little ones too who may not get so much love. Georgia, Namibia, Romania. If, yeah, any, the, the top eight that I see, I will do. I will play them. The most common eight recommended are the ones I will use. So kind of bear that in mind as I loose pass and fumble my way through the opening 10 minutes of this game. Um, something tells me the real version isn't going to be that sloppy, but War is away on the outside, and he should be down relatively close to the post for Fiji's first try against Tonga of the Pacific Nations at 12 minutes. So we're going to speed through a little bit of this. Just because the matches are so long, I want to keep recording time down and do conversions. If you want me to keep the uh, replays up, just let me know. 
and I will change. I'll change my ways. But for now, I'm just going to skip all of them. I'm just going to skip the replays, because if y'all want to see replays, you can look look back and watch. And Wara is away again. He's got more space. He can offload on the inside. Oh, and that worked. But he doesn't have support. He's going to get chased down, but we can get there on the ruck. Hopefully. Yeah, we've got it. It's secured by Fiji, who want to play out again. And also something we can talk about while we're here is the possibilities... Oh, that was a beautiful dive. I honestly thought Tonga was going to get there first. Um, while we're here playing this, the uh, Rugby 2016, or the Rugby World Cup 2015 game, that is being heavily hinted at but hasn't been announced yet, which may seem kind of late. So, like, what all they're going to do with it, who's making it, who's in it, licensing... I think uh, video games for rugby are a very good place to go, and it's somewhere that they really haven't... Oh, that was terrible. Uh, it's somewhere they really haven't put as much effort as they should, because it's not like it's impossible. It's not like rugby is something you can't do in a video game format. And really, I think the lack of success that a lot of rugby games have had is really this preconceived notion that it won't do well. That it's a niche market. Like Rugby 2015, which had a lot of problems out the gate. Uh, to my knowledge, hasn't really been patched yet. If it has, someone correct me on that, because I, I would love to actually pick it up if it's been made good. And really, I think also another really big problem that rugby developers or developers for rugby games need to look at is the pricing. The pricing for the community that's going to want to buy these games. Because really all of these games have been full title. They've Rugby uh, 2015 was 50 bucks in the US and, as well as similar prices around the world. And your main markets in, out in the Pacific really aren't going to be able to too terribly well afford that. So I think if people wanted to make a Rugby World Cup game that was relatively like relatively cheap, I was talking to a few people about this, about making a Sevens World Series game, that you didn't need to have the licensing for teams, you didn't need to have um, official player rosters or anything like that, you just needed the countries and a game that played well. If you sold it for 15, 20 bucks, then you would have a huge purchasing market in the Pacific Islands, where rugby is insanely popular, and people would want to buy that game and play it. If you made it multiplayer, if you made it stable, you made it play well, and you made it accessible to people, it would do well. So I don't think there's... I think it's kind of a fake notion that rugby games are doomed to fail, because... Oh, that was awful. I was too busy thinking about talking than actually paying attention to the conversion, but 19 nil up at 30 minutes is not a bad start for Fiji. So, yeah, again, kind of some similar... Yeah, share your thoughts or post um, kind of counter-arguments. If you do think that rug... Ooh! If you do think that a rugby game is really difficult and maybe studios should just kind of stop bothering and focus on a different avenue... Uh, to kind of stop disappointing rugby fans with bad games, if you think they should uh, make a different type of rugby game rather than emulating FIFA or something similar. Uh, like, uh, maybe a more interactive manager. Or something like that. Just let me know. So, Tonga will probably take the scrum, which we might be able to turn over. <laughs> it's the old scrum call. Oop. Not a good start. Fraps is making it a little sketchy, but still doing a pretty good job. So, yeah, back, I guess with that kind of out of the way, back back to the Six Nations, or the, pff, not the Six Nations, back to um, the Pacific Nations, and what that'll mean for the countries involved, especially going into the World Cup. 
since we have a uh, a good chance for these teams to play a lot of big games going in. How that'll change the outcome of the World Cup and how it'll help these teams. I don't know too terribly much about uh, Fiji or Tonga being North American. I don't I don't see things for these sides very often. So I don't really know what to say compared to my knowledge of what all the Eagles need to do to get their act together and prepare for uh, their pool. So I'm, I'm genuinely curious. Let me know um, about kind of what you guys think Fiji or Tonga need to do and how they could do. And we will focus on the game with kickoff for the second half. Fiji 19 nil up on Tonga, which is an excellent start. Ooh, but it's, they're not making it easy for me, and that missed tackle probably led in a try. It absolutely did. So what I need to do is kind of discourage him from putting it close to the post. So Tonga's going to go down for their first try in the second half. And they will get their conversion kick, which looks wide. Yep, just off shaved the inside. So 19 5, 42 minutes for this first game of the Pacific Nations 2015. And whoop. Oh, oh, that was that was lucky. They should, if they had let that bounce, I would have been kinda hosed. But we get to take the line out. Play it off quick. See if we've got some space out wide. No, I'm going to play it, keep playing it out, keep playing it out, cut off on the inside, spin around Nakatani, I think that's how you say that. Oh, but Tonga's going to force the turnover. And in the mall, so hopefully, what I'm hoping I can do is force Tonga to use it and kick it into touch. And that's exactly what they do, it doesn't go into touch. So I'm going to chase it and kick it straight. Oh, my buttons are messing with me. Oh, that's why. Well, so that totally, like, I did not plan any of that because my hands were off. My, <laughs> Yeah, my hand was on ESDF rather than WASD. It had slipped over. So that worked. Lucky, lucky. And if any of you are wondering why I'm on Rugby Challenge 1, not Rugby Challenge 2, is because um, when I had, when Rugby Challenge 2 first came out, a lot of the uh, feedback I had read was just get, just get one or keep one and mod it. Which is what I did, and it's... I'm glad I did, but also I'm really sad that I didn't get a chance to get two which was taken off the uh, market due to licensing concerns and uh, failures. So I'm, I'm kind of sad that I don't have two, because in all probability it will never be back. And I know there's a lot of... Uh, well, not a lot, but there's pretty close to confirmation that um, there won't be a Rugby Challenge 3, or at least by the studio, that they're kind of done with it which is upsetting because they were really good games. I really liked them. They were kind of the most reliable rugby game for the community and the fan base out there. Which is sad, but we'll see what we can get in the future as other studios give it a little bit more serious thought. So, kicked... Oh, dear. That's a high tackle. That may be yellow. Nope. No yellow, just lucky to get away with that. So they're going to kick it into touch. Go for the line out again. As the 60th minute passes. And they take their line out. So I'm going to try and match them. Keeping my guys ahead just a little bit. And they go for the far back. Oh, and they send it straight out. They send it straight back into this, the line out. It's weird. Just a chance to get eaten up by forwards. I don't know if that's such a good idea. So, we see now... Fiji really kind of 
pulling away with this game. A little bit. Oof, but a good tackle to prevent that run from expanding. I'm going to try to up and under, see if he can chase it down. Ooh, when he try, he almost gets it. But the wayward passes from Tonga are really hurting him. And I think, without um, jinxing myself, that Fiji kind of has this one. Fiji kind of has this game in the bag a little bit. Good. That wasn't illegal. That was almost illegal. But I'm going to cut in. Oh, that was a beautiful dummy. Oh, and I'm lucky that one went, didn't uh, carry wide. Oh, an inside pass to the knock-on. But he's going to try for it, but he's brought down short. Fiji really needs to pour the men on, but Tonga gets there first, so it'll be the Fijian scrum at about 7 meters. So we got this. Now the question is, do I try to go over the line, or do I go for a drop goal? Because we're in that position. We're in the position to drop goal. Depending on, It depends on how uh, well I do this scrum, which... Ooh, that, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to try and go for it. So we're going to pick it straight out. But he gets brought down off the line, and we've got a lot of space relatively available on the left, so that's where we're going to go. We're going to go left, and Rolu's got men, men and numbers, but he doesn't need it. So he just dives over the line, puts it down. 31-5 to five for Fiji. Take the kick and see it go. That looks good. 33, 33 to 5, Fiji to Tonga. Game's getting a little laggy on the animations, but a, oh, good offload to Rivala, who doesn't ma isn't man isn't able to make too much distance, unfortunately. Ugh. Oh, I thought there was another man out there. I thought I could do a cutout. But, alas, it was just my right winger. So, we'll try to contest this. Pass it back to the rear. Get some forwards and a heavy bind. But it's not enough. Oh dear. Controls are slipping. Oh, he may have men in space and time. Oh, he absolutely does. I'm going to drag him down, but he's in. A beautiful run from Tonga to make it 33-10 to 10 and give them a conversion on the far line. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to watch this one again, kind of just because I want to see what happens. Slips the tackle, offloads to the inside, and he's brought down. It's a good play by Tonga. And their conversion, with 75 minutes gone, is wide to keep it 33 to 10. And we're doing a few substitutions, kind of get the forward pack revitalized to close out the game. As we want to, we want to poach the kickoff. Hopefully, nope. Another almost attempt, another almost poach, but alas nothing doing. Oh, that pass went wide. It was a good attempt, a good run from Tonga, but a few handling errors gave us the line out and the turnover, and BG are going to break that tackle, but he's brought down just in front of the posts. Well, not just in front of, but in front of. Still not close enough to do a drop goal, and I don't really think I need to worry myself with a drop goal right now. Oh, that uh, was bad. I shouldn't have done that. But it's gathered to us, thankfully. Passes on the out, on the in. Trying to maintain possession and hold it. So what I'm going to do is, I think, 33-10 to 10 is all right with me. And I'm going to boot it into touch, and that'll be it. 33-10, to 10, Fiji over Tonga. The first game of the Pacific Nations Cup. Let me know what y'all thought. Anything y'all want me to do differently, or... Any advice you have, and again, your thoughts on the next, really, the next six months. 
of World Rugby that's going to be so fascinating, so interesting. Every game is going to be crucial building up to that final. So that was the first match, Fiji versus Tonga. Fiji come out victorious. We're going to look at the stats. Good possession, handling errors. Fiji needs to work on handling errors, but good line breaks, double offloads. And that is that. I will cut back to the page as results, or to show the results, the updated results. And I will see you all next time for Canada versus Japan. Thank you all for watching, guys. I'll see you all again.